and um, take a uh, take note of who's here. So, Tom, would you like to call the meeting to order? Right, let's call the meeting to order. And I'm Tom Boland. I'll be serve, leading the meeting tonight for the Environmental Advisory Council. I'm Kate Schlott. Jessica Hewlett. Jennifer Glansberg. All right, so uh, I'm going to bring in the applicant now. Um, uh, hello, so we have Hilda and um, Jose, I'm, I'm assuming Jose is Jose Tomei, who is the uh, owner of the building. Um, Hello, Hilda? Oh, uh, yes. Hi, I'm um, Hilda. I'm with uh, Jose. We are the architects for that project. So I'm sorry, our, I think his lawyer wasn't able to be here today. So I'm kind of here to represent or like to answer any questions you may have. Um, Jose is the owner. So let me see if you have any questions for him too. I mean, I think he's there. I'm not sure if he has his camera on. Um, uh, yeah. Hello, Hilda. Well, welcome. Thanks for, for coming in front of us tonight. Um, I did have a, I, I did look through the, the documents that you have um, that were attached to the agenda for tonight's meeting. It looks like you're seeking a variance to uh, modify a building for partial retail use and residential use. Is that correct? Yes, so our client is actually looking to have the first floor as a commercial space. As of right now, it's a two family house in a single um, family zone. So that's our issue right now that we want to be able to have this rest. I mean, it's a bakery what they want to have. It's a um, home family run bakery that they had um, a little background. I don't know if you are aware of this. Um, they had a bakery uh, business, um, like an a boutique end um, business. I, Jose's wife, it's a, it's a really good baker. Like she does this amazing bake um, cakes and everything for um, parties. So they, I mean, their initial idea was to buy this house and have the bakery in the first floor so they can run their own business. Like, he owns the house next to it, like 286 uh, Spring Street. So it was very convenient for them. Unfortunately, they didn't realize that this was not allowed because as of the, I mean, the features of the house right now, if you see it, it's like all as if it was a residential, uh, commercial building. Because back in the day, it was designed and it was run as a business in the first floor. But, you know, zoning changes, everything changed and, um, it was never legalized to be an actual commercial space on the first floor. So that's what we're here for. Um, there are two apartments, one on the first floor, uh, sorry, uh, second and third floor. Um, I was there a while ago and then the first floor was, seems like it wasn't used at all. It was like a lot of, gar um, I'd say like it was kind of like more like a storage space. So I'm not sure what was used before for the previous owner and um, so right now we're looking to have this space converted into a commercial. So uh, um, to clarify why you're here today, uh, the um, the village of Austin has an LWRP. Uh, it's a local waterfront revitalization plan. And so any properties that are west of Route 9 um, and are um, going through the land use boards um, that are not listed as type two actions, are sent to the EAC for review uh, to make sure that it is in conformance with the LWRP. And so in order to ascertain whether it is in conformance with the LWRP, you had to fill out a coastal assessment form, which is what I have pulled up here. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the issue at hand uh, for this board to review is, is less about the use. In okay. this instance, um, uh, because you're coming forward for use variance and you know the potential disturbance you could have 
to the district. So you did fill out the form um, and you have checked no on everything. Uh, so uh, I would ask the board if they have any comments on the form, if they wanted any clarification on any items, um, you know, pertinent to the LWRP review. I guess the, the only question I have is, is it seems pretty straightforward. Is it, are, are you, is the owner planning to make any modifications to the outside of the, the building? Uh, no, I mean, depends on um, if we get approved. The only modification it will be to change the glazing, which is uh, right now it's a single pane. It's so um, it's energy inefficient. So we will basically change it to a double pane for energy efficiency. But as of, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have seen all those pictures. It's, it's more like as a commercial, all the facade is as a commercial. So we're planning to keep as is, just changing um, minimal for en energy efficiency. That's great. So no like landscaping um, changes or driveways or anything like that? No, it, it's basically um, the site. Uh, I don't know if we can pull out the site plan, yeah. but. There really isn't a parking lot that leads into the front of that building from what I saw in the pictures or a driveway. Um, There's nothing. The, the question I had for you though um, is how is the garbage going to be dealt with? Because I, I know that the Google Maps picture is not accurate as far as what it looks like today, but um, will there be garbage bins? How will things be collected? Because right now I know things are just kind of tossed onto the sidewalk. So how do they plan to, to deal with that? Do they have bins already or? It, they have bins as for a residential. Okay. So it would be in the back. Uh, okay. That's really because they have no places on the side or anything. And it's, I think it's seven inches in one side through the property line. There you go. It, it's basically on the property line. So there's no space to put your, the bin or anything. So it would be in the back. And then when pickup days, you will have to move it to the front. And then they'll have to just bring it to the front and do Correct. it. Okay. Okay. Um, the good thing about this, I mean, he owns the other house, the next, uh, the little piece that you see, exactly that one. So, I mean, there's access through the back to, to be rig any big things through his driveway. Um, but regardless, it will be all the way in the back. So this seems straightforward to me. I think it's consistent with the LWRP and I think we're, I'll speak for myself, I'm happy to, to see that the owner's taking the project on. Great. Jen, Jessica, did you have any questions or comments? No, I mean, I agree with you that, uh, you know, everything looks good and I know I'd, I'd rather see it put to, you know, some use, especially considering the fact that there's really not going to be many changes to the building. Yeah, same. I think it'd be great to have a bakery over there. Great. Um, yeah, we, we submitted also a few renderings, like basically just touch-ups to the building. We're trying to keep the character of the, how it is right now, it's a really nice brick building that needs some remodeling, I mean, some cleaning, some rejoinery, and um, just to keep it live, that area, because as of right now, it's just there, existing. So, Jaime, what do we need to, to formally close this out on our end? Um, a letter saying that it conforms with the LWRP. Okay. Um, and the, uh, they're going in front of the um, Zoning Board of Appeals tomorrow. So uh, you don't need to get it by tomorrow, uh, but if you had it by tomorrow, it'd be helpful. Is that something that I can sign as since I'm leading the meeting or do we need, need yeah, you can, like you can hey. use the um, I did hear back from Erica just now. She can't make it. Um, she has something else going on. She thought the meeting was tomorrow. Uh, yeah, so Tom, you could actually just, uh, you could write a letter um, on letterhead um, and sign it. Um, you could probably even, Stuart, is there anything preventing him from doing like an e-signature and just emailing it? Nothing. 
You can do it that way. That's fine. Yeah, you don't even need to like sign and scan it. You can just do it like e-signature and so. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Um, awesome. Well, I'll I'll do what I can tend to get that over uh, to you in the morning. That that work. That's perfect. Great. Thank you. And Thank Jamie, you, everybody. Get it to Jamie Kane and myself. That'd be fantastic. If you if you don't know her email address, you just send it to me. I've got I've got Jamie's email too. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Um, and so the other item on the agenda is right. So moving, moving on to the next item, we have the open space inventory. Kate, I, I was, while we were waiting for Erica uh, to join, I was starting to go through the, the map that you sent us. Do you want to walk us through that? Um, sure. I actually I had an opportunity to meet with Jaime uh, not too long ago. So Jaime actually helped me out a lot um, with stuff for the project. I'm just trying to find where I just had it. Sorry. That's not it. Here we go. I, I unfortunately I can't share it on the screen, so I don't know if you have. Uh, I can. You guys have it up. I do have it, and I can share it. Yeah. Great, thank you. All right. All right. Um, so I know, like from this angle, it's kind of like very clustered and cluttered and, and yeah. So when you zoom in, it kind of does a, it redoes it. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so what I put in the map here, um, so when I met with Jaime, um, he made a, a open space shape file for me for um, the village of Ossining. Um, and what I have in there right now represents what the village designates as open space when we look at um, percentage of un developed land on properties. So this is in addition to what the county is also labeling as open space. So we have some of the very clear, you know, parks, um, some of the trails. I was able to put the rail line in there. And what I did with the coastal area was to also show not just what is designated as open space there, but also overlaid it with um, parking lots as well as what is considered to be the floodplain at the moment. So we can get an idea of like what areas of open space right now are within the floodplain. Um, I did put, um, what is this, the steep slopes, because we do have some empty lots right now that are sitting on some steep slopes. If we go up along um, Sing Sing Kill and we follow that through, you can actually see that there are parts of the kill. Um, there is some development, but there are large areas that actually don't have anything there and they're very steep and we really wouldn't want to build on them anyway. Um, so keeping this in mind in conjunction with what's going on with the comp plan, um, I think this might be a good way of starting to designate um, some of the areas, not so much designate, but figure out which areas, even if they're built on, that we could still include in an open space inventory. Um, but also, do we want to just include things that are publicly accessible, or can we also include things privately accessible? I know that for a lot of people in the village that it is a big concern that we designate whatever open space that we can find so that we know for sure like what we would want to preserve in the future or how we want development to go. So this would be important. Oh yeah, so that's um, what Jaime, uh, what he showed me the other day when we went in. So this was um, the village level of, so this was the percentage of use, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Um, open space Yeah. When I, that's available? Yeah. So essentially what I did was I took, um, Westchester County GIS did a flyover of LIDAR data and identified 
all of the um, like any structures, right? So there's buildings, streets. Um, they do planimetric data. So if you're in, does anybody know what planimetric data is? I didn't think so. It's a GIS term. And so planimetric data basically is like, you know, street center lines, you know, the shapes of structures, sidewalks, any sort of, any kind of anything, right? Poles. Um, and it's all the kind of data that feeds into, you know, DPW or, you know, planning stuff. And so one of the things that's really good about that is it tells you where all the sidewalks and all of the, you know, disturbed land is. Um, and so what's nice about that is you can take the parcel lines essentially, um, which, which is almost to the curb lines, uh, and you can just cut out essentially all of the um, developed space and figure out on a parcel by parcel level um, or, or, or larger, how much of each property is developed. And so what I, what I did was I kind of broke it down into sort of percentages. So um, the really light green is 76 to 100 um, percent undeveloped land. The, the second, the very more yellowish green is anywhere from 50 to 75 percent undeveloped. Uh, the orange is 26 to 50 percent undeveloped. And then the most developed is the red, right? And the red is hardest to see because there's almost nothing left to see in those areas. And the white is developed space. So um, you take, for instance, uh, you know, a park, right? Parks, you would think they're going to be totally green. And of course they are. Uh, you have places like the school here. Uh, and the school is not totally undeveloped. It's not totally developed either, right? It's sort of in that 50 to 75 percent range. You have some districts like the S100, uh, where you have very few houses, um, and they're very, you know, undeveloped, uh, but not as much as you think. And then you have other districts where you have a lot of, you know, kind of the higher density of homes, and you can see that there is, in those areas, um, there's very little development. And of course, in the downtown where you would expect the, the least amount of, um, you know, open space, green space, that's what you got. And so, you know, the question of what does that mean specifically, right? So if we go here, you can turn on the, um, turn on the layer and you can see that it, it, it's essentially the, the grass that remains, right? So right. It's, it, it's pretty good, this layer of identifying what is green space and not. Um, it's obviously not perfect. You can see here in Market Square, it thinks that Market Square is, is all grass. Um, when in fact it's not, but it's, it's very good. You know, it even catches the sidewalk and stuff like that in the little walkway mm -hmm. down here into the tree wells. So it's really, really good information. And this was really helpful because I know for, you know, a lot of parcels that are available um, that people are looking to develop, this is also good to help us when we look at how we want to, you know, give them suggestions on how to incorporate green space as they start to go through these projects. Like it gives me an idea of, where we had all of this open area that I didn't realize was even there, um, or at least to the extent that it was there. Um, so like when I went to the DPW site, you know, seeing that whole area along the kill, like it gives me an idea of like where we actually have some of this um, open space and green space that's on some of the private property. Yeah. And I think it's, a, you know, it, it you know, how you look at redevelopment is really kind of a personal opinion thing. And I don't want to get too much into sort of like con conveying an opinion here. I have my opinion, everybody else has their own. But you can see from from an environmental standpoint, if you're if your goal is to preserve um, green space, uh, where you can, um, if you go and say, hey, we currently have three story buildings in, in the downtown, um, and I don't want anything more than three stories here. Um, and you say, but I'm okay, why don't you put a nice little development over here, say for instance, in the CDD district, right? CDD district has like no development. So any new development sort of takes away from green space. Um, new development in the downtown um, really doesn't, right? Because there isn't much to begin with. And so there is certainly a thought process in the, in the planning community um, that, that says you really should focus redevelopment in areas that are already developed rather than sort of seeking out new areas to build stuff. 
And there's an infrastructure case for it to say like, it's going to cost you more because you got to put in pipes. You got to pay to reline those pipes and maintain those pipes over the years um, where you don't necessarily have to do that here because you already have a kind of infrastructure in place. Um, but there's also just like the, the straight, you know, cost of, you know, green space, right? So if you, right. if you get rid of green space here, um, there's almost nothing to remove, right? So um, if you get rid of green space in an area that's totally undeveloped, there's, there's a lot to remove. And once it's gone, you know, it almost never comes back. Um, so from a policy standpoint, um, some communities have taken the decision that like, we do want redevelopment, uh, but we only want it in certain areas. Uh, and so some areas are kind of off the market. We want to, we want to sort of disincentivize development in, in certain places and incentivize development in certain places. And that, you know, that has problems too, right? So uh, there's ups and downs to all that stuff. But Seattle is like a notable case where they said, look, we're only going to allow development here. And then there was this explosion in rents and gentrification. Right. So th there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses and trade-offs that, every policy that you take um but this is certainly i think it's you know very interesting and useful so yeah i was just gonna say i think that what you did here in great in this layer is just it's going to be such a useful tool for for everyone who participates in, in the comp plan i mean i think our goal when we first started talking about open space was twofold it was to identify the open space and then and we had to figure out a way to you know characterize that and i feel like this you know accomplished it better than i think we could hope we would be able to do and then the, the second part was the, to then characterize or um, classify the, the different types of open space so uh I, I think we still have that that piece left to kind of go through and and not just and how open the parcels are, but what what type type of open space is each parcel? Is it steep slope? Is it is it open field? Right, and that's and I think this will help us with that because um, I know we were kind of stuck in that in that area as well. And I think you know having this um, the elevation, um, the steep slope, in that layer in there as well really helps us to identify that too. Because I'm looking at um, from the map I sent you, I'm looking at a lot of steep sloped areas in throughout the village right. so that this will help us you know make those connections and go forward so we i know we've had talked about different tiers for the open space right mm -hmm. so is that the the next step here is to go through these and figure out which tier each at this point i would think I would think so. Um, yeah, I don't see why, why that wouldn't be the next step. I mean, right now we have, you know, a preliminary tier system going on and we can switch things around as needed. Um, but yeah, I think this would be a good way of us actually being able to categorize um, the different uh, spaces and, and get that finalized. Um, and then we can decide from, or not decide, but we can figure out from there which areas we can also designate not just as open space, but public use open space. Because I know when we initially talked about the project, um, there was also this concern about having space that was publicly accessible, um, especially with the start when COVID hit. Um, knowing where all of this stuff is would have been really good for a lot of people in the community. So I think this would be something that would benefit having not just identifying the open space, but also identifying the open space that can be used by people in the community. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you get, that's actually a very interesting point. Um, one of the things that, that this um, data kind of reveals is, um, and I'm gonna turn off some of these layers because it's like too much. Uh, it does reveal like areas where, you know, there's, there, there's like none, right? So mm -hmm. you can see there's very little open space in this kind of area here. And so if you were to let, you know, overlay, you know, parks, you could from this point do an analysis on, um, you know, how far people have to walk to get to a park, right? Which is an analysis they do and it's, it, it speaks to kind of environmental justice and stuff like that. But you, you could, you could, you know, 
say, look, these are already areas, like this area in particular, this is kind of the T, T zone, I think, in the VC district. And there is a park here, there's a park here. Um, but, you know, this is like an empty hillside, right? This is not, mm -hmm. uh, this is a school. And I'm not sure how available the school is uh, to the general public. Um, so for, for some, you know, some parts of uh, the village, and it's worth, you know, figuring out where, they may not be that close to a park. Um, and if there are resources that the village can make available to, to provide access, um, you know, then you can sort of measure where you want to do that, um, how you want to do that. So it, it could be something that feeds into the policy. I don't know if that's something that y'all are interested in doing then I think it's it's pretty easy to take that that park layer and figure that out and then you know go the next step of figuring out whether or not there is a desire to try to build more you know passive open space locations one of the things that I was really in, interested in and in, in exploring with this open space project if you uh, scroll back over to that um, to the downtown area. The the old Croton Aqueduct, which we we have, you know, the the double bridge by the rec center, mm -hmm. really runs right through there. It just it, if there was a way to to some some way bring that back is almost like a trailway park. You know, you're you're not taking up a big footprint, but to provide some public space that also connects you to the other open space areas. Yeah. It would be a really cool way to, to, to um, accomplish that. Yeah, so this is the, uh, this is that trailway you're talking about. This is the Old Court and Right. Which by the way, I live on the Old Court and in Yonkers. I can just- right now you do? I can just, yeah, currently, I mean, that my, yeah. yeah. Like it's in my backyard. Yep. Yeah. My very shallow backyard. It's about 15 feet away from my house. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but uh, it's funny. I could just uh, I could just get on the trail and then come straight up in a bike. Although well, it gets a little tricky though when you get up to Asening though because it yeah it's, that's <laughs> it's connected here. Like, you know it's it's dicey everywhere. I made it all the way up to Ardsley once and it's like yeah. there's a lot of breaks. Yeah. Well, I know that was also part of the discussion that we had. Um, a number of months ago about connecting that Croton Aqueduct Trailway and at least getting the Ossining portion of it somewhat, you know, in better order that's more usable. I mean, um, I'm not far from the trail where I am and, you know, where I am, it's, it's great. Um, but when you get to the train station or you get down a little farther south, it's, it, it does get choppy. Um, yeah, and that's something that we can, I guess, work on in, yeah, you know, so it cuts through there and. Yeah. There's actually a house that has a, has a piece of it. <clears throat> this house, you can see their sidewalk is literally cut to miss it. Cause it's a different property. <laughs> um, for full disclosure, I work for DEP for the water supply. So I, we, we still own and operate the other, the, the three aqueducts that bring water down to the city, but I've always taken a, an interest to the old Croton. It is a nice trailway. I've, I've walked from here to, I'm trying to think how far I got. I got, you get, it, there's a pretty big hill at, at, at a certain point. I think I got to here and then I sort of stopped. Here, right when you get past Snowden and it cuts behind all of the properties that are on Highland, on mm -hmm. North Highland, it kind of gets into that a bit hilly around the Crawbucky area. Um, and then it comes out into the sidewalk and then it continues up nine. I mean, is this part of, this is the hill, I think, right? It's sort of, there's these steps. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's going from Ann Street up to North Malcolm. It's... Um, yeah, it's right after you get across the walkway, it's the hill up the steps, and then it takes you up a little more up the hill, and there's a little playground that's right on the other side of the hill. Yeah, I made it a good distance. I, I didn't make it this far. Actually, I did this side, but on a different day. But yeah, it's a, it's a great walk. It really is. Like, 
except for the downtown. It's beautiful one way and beautiful the other way. In the downtown, it's you get you, you sort of lose it. Right. Well, in the downtown, it cuts through a building complex. Does it? Yeah, it crosses, yeah. So it, it cuts across uh, um, Main Street, and then and then it continues so through a couple of buildings, and then it comes out. Is, yeah, is awesome. Actually, it has like potential to be a nice little like restaurant patio row type situation. It's really cool, and the complex okay. is looking at trying to incentivize some development or at least allow it um, over here where you could open it up and bring restaurants out here. The buildings are not really set up for that right now, but it would be awesome. It's a really cool space. And um, this is where it kind of disappears into the street. Into Spring Street. Yeah. So the, maybe in that area, because there's nothing really that designates it on um, Spring Street, uh, maybe to give it more of that continuity you know, maybe some historic signs or something or something to indicate that this is still part of that trailway to keep that flow until you get to Nelson Park where it cuts across the sitting park. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not even a very good walkable sidewalk. I mean, it's like... It's okay, it's okay. I used to live right, over... I was gonna, it's almost just like a sidewalk improvement. And I think you're right on, Kate, with with signage that, that, that ties it back together. It's, it's the discontinuity that... You wouldn't know. Going right. down Spring Street, you would never know after that spot that that's where the the aqueduct is. Now, it's not a it's not a biking trail going this way because once you get up to the double past the double bridge, I mean, you could bike it, I guess, but you have to carry your bike up that hill. I, I see people Other doing direction. it all the time. <laughs> is it biking? Yeah, I see people doing biking. They get off right at the hill, they go up the stairs, and then they get right back on at the top of the stairs, and they continue from there. Okay. That's interesting. I think that'd be a really good recommendation, trying to find a way to integrate the old Croton Aqueduct Trail. Because it does really kind of stretch, like, you know, essentially the length of the village. Right. It's, I think this is it up here, right? And then it kind of cuts across the street and comes down here and mm. and it comes all the way down here to the edge. Yeah. All right. So that's so that's where where so that's where we are. Okay. So I guess going forward now, um yeah, I mean let's start I guess putting together the uh the tiers and we can just you know, even if it's just going back and forth for now and tossing out the ideas, you know, for like the next meeting, we can have um, a working list going. You know, we can switch things out as needed and, and adjust as we go forward, but at least get like a working spreadsheet going so that we can start categorizing the different areas. And if we can find, um, you know, whatever we can get and just put it in. Because I know once the comp plan is, once they're done with the comp plan, this will be something that, or at least once we get to the next stage of the comp plan, because there's still a little while. Um, you know, we could start putting this, you know, comparing it, see what's going on, see if we're on the same page as what uh, is going on with that too. Keep things, you know, uniform if we can. So do we have a, a way to export those um, parcels into a, a spreadsheet? Is that a possibility with, with certain characteristics? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes. The, the quick answer is yes. The long answer is, is um, in, like, how would you plan on using them so that I could get them in a format that's useful to you? I can, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just give you a, a snapshot of what that database looks like right now. Um, You know, I uh, and here. So this is a, a supremely unuseful thing to you right now. It has a lot of information in it that has nothing to do with what you want to do. Um, I'm I'm having flashbacks to intro GIS classes. So I mean, you know, I I will I would say so. Just you know, full disclosure, I taught GIS for like seven years. So, you know, this looks like a lot of valuable information to me and it looks like garbage to everybody else. 
And so I would have to make sense of it. It would help to know how you want to use it uh, in a table so that I can clean up the names and make sense of it, maybe provide a data dictionary and stuff like that, which is not a lot of work. It's, 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 a, it's a minimal amount of work. It's just uh, however you think it, it's going to be useful to you, I would make sure that it had the proper information carried over. So currently it has like property class, which is like, it's a two family, three family apartment buildings. It has assessed value. It has, you know, the area, the square footage of, of the thing. There are parcels underneath it. So it has the existing parcel data and the square footage of that as, you know, numbers that were created that sort of like reference each other to tell you the percentage of the original to the new. There's clips and, unions and I'm getting into a lot of stuff that's now I'm sure I'm so it's beyond sensible. I can see Jennifer's eyes are getting big, you know? Uh, so yeah, tell me how you want to use it and I'll, and I'll, and I'll make it happen. I, okay. I mean, how long did it take us to, to make this Kate in the office? I don't know. Very quick. Once we, once we actually like figured out what it was we were looking for, it was like less than two minutes. It was very quick. That's yeah. great. So ask for the world. It may not be as hard to get as you think. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so then I guess um, I'll go, we'll figure out what we exactly what we want and then we'll let you know. I can't answer that immediately. Um, but yeah, we can, we can make that work. Cool. And uh, if you want to meet again, Kate, we can um, just let me know when. Okay. Uh, in person or Zoom. All right, cool. Because I'd probably be Zoom because once, because uh, now that COVID cases are going up again, mm -hmm. the schools have been, it's been a little unstable with schools. Yeah, I have two yeah. kids and they're, they have yet to go back to school. Oh. And uh, my daughter, we just, my net, I just had, you know, my, my, my brother in law just had a, well, my, my sister in law just had a baby. And my daughter was like, I'm not going back to school because I'm going to hang out with my nephew, <laughs> my, my cousin. So, yeah, you know. I'm the only person who leaves now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? I think that's it for me on the open space stuff. So I think that covered the the two bullets we had on the agenda. Was there was there older items that we need to look at or something? Unresolved I think, items. I think it was just the only thing left was the resolution and minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that was really a discussion for Erica, and she's not here, so. Um, so the uh, minutes, we'll deal with that next time. Sounds good. I will get you and uh, Jamie the letter on 284 Spring Street, and I will copy the, the rest of the members. Thank you. Stuart, anything to add? No, sir. Thank you. All right. Well, this was a quick meeting. So everyone have a great night. Yep. You have too. Good night, everybody. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.